Hello everyone, welcome. We're live. I hope you can hear me properly today. Uh, it is Thursday Q&A live from Digital DJ Tips, the world's leading DJ school. And that means that I'm here, Phil Morse, in the Digital DJ Tips studio. We've got our controller of the day, which is the uh, rain, uh, the rain one. Uh, for Serato here, so maybe you've got questions about Serato or the rain controllers or motorized jog wheels, which we were talking about on Tuesday. Uh, but we've also got uh, me here surrounded by all the controllers and equipment and headphones and microphones and software and hardware that you can imagine in the world of DJing, which I can go grab and talk to you about. So whether your questions and queries as you try and improve your DJing are about your gear, your software, your music, playing out, promoting yourself, live streaming, playing gigs, whatever it is, I am here to help in the Digital DJ Tips studios today. And unlike our Tuesday show, which is at the same time but on a Tuesday, this show is all about you. There's no agenda here. I haven't got anything that I particularly want to talk about. We just hit the live button, go live for an hour and chat DJing and take it where it goes. So that said, We'll move over to this camera, which is where I can see all the comments coming in from our wonderful audience. Hello, Technobeats. Hello to Stuart and Eddie uh, and to uh, Easy. I've never won anything in the Digital DJ Tips giveaway, says Easy. The Digital DJ Tips giveaway uh, is actually this. It's our 2022, well, we do it every year, census. Uh, and we have just announced the results of this, by the way. Here it is. So if you're interested in taking a look at this, uh, head over to the Digital DJ Tips website where we ask you to tell us about your DJing, everything about your DJing. You can tell us where you are, you know, uh, how old you are, what gear you use, what music you play, how many gigs you've got, what you want to buy next, whether you make music, whether you use microphones, whether you use PA systems, whether you consider yourself a house DJ or a mobile DJ. There's literally um, scores and scores of questions in here that 21,000 of you have answered this year. And as part of this draw, everyone in the industry gives us prizes to give to you for uh, for taking part. And that's, that's what uh, you were talking about there, that you haven't uh, managed to win something yet. Well, better luck next time. But uh, more importantly, those results are now out. And if you're a member of Digital DJ Tips, and you should be, uh, we're gonna email you a PDF of the results that you can download and keep. Uh, so well worth being a member, uh, even if only for that. But there's more reasons to join as well. There's the URL there, digitaldjtips.com slash join. You get a free copy of our book which I can't reach anymore since I've tidied up the shelves, but there it is. Uh, you get a free copy of this, Rock the Dance Floor, which is uh, there, uh, which is the number one seller on Amazon on how to DJ. Uh, but also, more importantly, you get added to our uh, training list and you get lots and lots of free training with our Tuesday emails where we send out training, mixed training, free lessons from our courses, uh, and there's lots and lots of articles and uh, other stuff we publish every week as well. Uh, so for instance, just this week on Digital DJ Tips, we have, as well as the census, we've got uh, some pretty uh, interesting info about these earplugs, which actually turn, turn up and down. They've got a volume control on them. Uh, which is pretty cool. So you want to protect your hearing, but you don't know how much you want to protect it in any given gig. Uh, so we've got uh, that as a brand new review that's just been published. Uh, also, how to measure sound levels. You can tell we've been thinking about thinking about your ears this week. Uh, so we've got some uh, info about that. Uh, we've also got a way of playing with the Roland TB303, the classic 303 drum machine, uh, for free. Uh, so that's there as well. You can go and take a look at that. Uh, so, um, also we have got um, a James's, James Hype, our tutor, did a, an awesome live stream to help the children of Ukraine suffering, of course, more than anyone in this, uh, this unbelievable war that is going on. So, uh, you can go and click and watch the replay of that and you can still donate to the cause, which I thoroughly recommend you do. So, loads of stuff over on Digital DJ Tips as well. Uh, so, let's do it. Let's talk DJing for the next hour live from our studio here. Uh, so the Rockers says, uh, woke up early enough. Hello, hello to you as well. Uh, right, so Alan says, oh, by the way, yes, the rules, the rules of the game. Uh, keep calm. Oh, let me get rid of that uh, thing. I think we've all seen that now. Keep calm and ask. So use the hashtag ask, please, if you would like to ask a question, because we're now live on Facebook and Twitch and YouTube, and there's hundreds of questions coming in, uh, hundreds of comments. So if you hashtag your question ask, it's more likely to get an answer. And ask your questions now. 
don't wait half an hour because by then uh, they're all going to be getting lost. If you are watching the replay or if you don't get your question answered live, that's cool because we'll answer them in the comments as humanly possible, as many of them as we can afterwards. Best place to be watching this is on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash digital DJ tips, because your questions and comments remain underneath the video afterwards and they don't do that on YouTube. So uh, do uh, prefer Facebook if you are uh, happy to do that. Right, questions. Uh, this is from WH Family and Friends. Hi, can I create a video crate for Serato, a video icon? Don't know if you can actually. I don't know what you can do to customize your, your videos crate on the Serato software when you've got Serato video running. Uh, but uh, WH Family and Friends is over on YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can just maybe uh, help him or her out in the comments there. Hello to Papa D and hello to Craig as well. And Nuno uh, to JT69 United, my team. Hello to Stuart on uh, Twitch. Um, right, okay, so questions. Uh, what is a good speaker stand over 50 to 85 pounds hydraulic or air? Again, this is something that I want you to help Sly out with community over on Facebook. It will be underneath the Facebook comments. Uh, so the only speaker stands that we've got here at the moment are the ones for the, you can't see them actually, they're off camera, the sound box speakers. Um, and they're the only ones I've used for the last year or two. They work fine, but uh, but uh, yeah, someone will help you over there, I'm sure. Uh, DJ Gum Smack 1975 said, "I love my Rain One. Rain One being this uh, controller that we have here. I'm glad you do. It's an absolutely fantastic controller for sure." Uh, so, hello to Jesus Jesus Sanchez checking in from someone's mum's house. I love it. My ten-year-old boy would be very uh, proud of that comment you just made there. He just uh, paraphrased one of his favourite phrases right. Now, uh, so uh, what piece of hardware do I need for better quality live streaming, says Scraggles. This is a great question. You know, we're live streaming to you now from the Digital DJ Tips studio, and we're always trying to improve the way we stream. I'm, I'm not happy with the way our streams are working right now. I don't like that shadow there, for instance. I've just noticed it because of that uh, light up in the corner that got moved when we were rearranging the studio. Uh, so. Really, if you're gonna be streaming your DJ sets, the most important thing you can improve is the audio quality. Because people will forgive bad video, but they won't forgive bad audio. So my top advice would be to get yourself a audio interface. So whatever it is you're live streaming out of, have a good audio interface going into that thing. Now you're lucky if you're using Serato, Tractor, Recordbox, Virtual DJ. In other words, if you're using any DJ software, the audio from that DJ controller that you've got plugged into your laptop is already available to your laptop. In other words, if you're doing your live streams from a laptop and using software like OBS, which is the one everyone uses, to go live on Twitch or YouTube or wherever, then you can already put really good quality audio from your DJ gear into that broadcast. And then to get a microphone in there, to get your voice in there, just get a decent microphone. This is a Shure SM58, the classic, uh, plugged into straight into your DJ gear. So in other words, if you were DJing on the Rain 1 here, you'd plug your microphone directly into the microphone socket around the back, uh, and you would plug your this, this lead here that's going off to your computer is also gonna carry the audio to the computer, and then the computer will get, when you speak on the microphone here, the computer will get both the microphone and the music so you're sorted if not if you're not doing it that way you might need an audio interface audio interfaces don't cost an awful lot this is a little evermix one uh, in order to get the audio from one of the outputs on your dj controller into your computer your ipad or whatever you are streaming from but don't rely on uh, you know a microphone to pick up dj audio because that's bad as far as video goes the most important thing is to light where you're djing properly you know, your phone will give you great video, great video, if you've lit the scene properly. You know, it doesn't matter how ugly your lights look. It doesn't matter if you've got fluorescent tubes out of your garage or you've got, you know, the, uh, the standard lamp from granny's bedroom or <laughs> you've got your bedside lamps or it doesn't matter what you've done. If you just set your gear up near a window so the window light's coming in, that's gonna help. Fill in any shadows, make sure your camera isn't struggling. And you know your camera's struggling because it will start to look grainy. And as soon as it starts looking grainy, that is when you are not gonna get 
good quality video. And if you've only got one camera angle, then the best way of making sure that it looks all right when you're doing a live stream is to have the gear and the talent, which is you, visible at the same time. So for instance, the shot I've got here wouldn't be very good. If like I've got decks here now, I could be DJing, but the shot I've got here wouldn't be any, any good because you can't see my decks, right? That doesn't matter. This is set up that way for me to talk and then to jump to that shot and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but I have another camera that looks down on the decks and all this. We've got loads of cameras here, but if you've only got one camera, have it so that it's facing down onto the decks, but also can see you. And that just involves getting the distance right and getting the height right and getting the angle right for that camera. So as long as people can see your decks and as long as people can see you and as long as it sounds good and is lit properly, you know, that's pretty much all you need to get a decent quality first uh, live stream out there. You know, the census that I was just talking to you about that we just did on Digital DJ Tips where we asked everyone in our community uh, what they want to do in their DJing this year. Uh, the census is, has got some really important, uh, interesting uh, questions about live streaming. And it turns out that like at least 80%, I think it was, it's a very high number of people really want to live stream, uh, but only 10% actually have. Uh, which is, you know, it just goes to show that a lot of people are still waiting to be to be helped and uh, and shown how to do it. Now we do have a course on live streaming, so if you are not uh, sure how to get started and you would like me personally to help you, you can do that by getting the course. Go to the courses tab at the top of our website and scroll down uh, all the way down, and you'll come to uh, specialised courses. And the one you want is DJ Live Streaming Made Easy. And here we'll tell you not only how to go live on your phone, but how to go live on the cameras you've probably got knocking around, uh, and then if you want to go a bit further than that and start buying cameras and start buying hardware and doing it kind of properly, we'll talk to you about how to do that as well. It covers all of that stuff. So uh, if you are uh, someone who wants help, then that could help you. But we've also got free resources as well. You don't have to go and buy our course if you just want to dabble. Uh, and let me show you how you can get to those. So again, go to the Digital DJ Tips website, click on the little magnifying glass. This is the secret weapon of Digital DJ Tips because we've got about 5,000 articles. Type in live streaming, we spell it as one word, and you'll get loads and loads of articles about live streaming that we've written. And the one I would recommend you start with, scroll down, go to the ultimate guide to DJ live streaming in 2022 and this will give you a whole set of info and links to other articles that can help you assuming you've never done this before uh, and it will take you down every road that's possible and you'll see me using all kinds of equipment in here and showing you how to do it on different setups and all the equipment that you might need the cameras and the lights and the microphones it's all detailed in here uh, and it's all based on experience. We've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of live streams. In fact, there's me setting one up uh, on a beautiful sun, sum, summer's day round a pool. By my pool, in fact. Uh, and it was a lot of fun, that one. I seem to remember. Okay, thanks for the question. We are live. It's me, Phil, here in the Digital DJ Tips studio. And uh, Paul is celebrating because Paul managed to get to number eight in the mix cloud chart. So thank you for making this happen. Well, that's what we're here for, Paul. So... Uh, that just goes to show what can happen if you uh, if you push yourself out of your comfort zone and do some of the stuff we train here at Digital DJ Tips. It's really good to hear that. Um, so Darren says, why are they copywriting dance music outside of DJs who are buying this music but us? Who oh, Outside of DJs, who's buying this music but us? I don't get it. Copyright is copyright. It doesn't matter what the genre is or who's buying the music. Copyright is copyright. It's the way the music industry runs. You're never going to change it. So my advice would be to... Uh, Use platforms which are legal. You know, there are legal platforms to stream on and to put stuff out on. So use the legal platforms. Uh, Mixcloud Live. Twitch will not take your live streams down, but it will not let you leave recordings up. And YouTube will let you go live 80% of the time. But again, it just depends. So again, let me give you a tip. Head over to Digital DJ Tips. Type YouTube in the search bar and you're gonna get this article here. Three vital steps for DJing on YouTube without copyright hassle. Take a look at that and I'll show you how to get around the YouTube copyright issues, at least most of the time. It's worked for us nearly all the time, what I teach you there. This is from Jermaine. Hello, Jermaine. Is there another DJ app that I can use with my SB3 on iPad? I'm being a bit cheap and to use DJ on iPad with an SB3, you have to buy a subscription. There is, there's an app called DJ Player 
on iPad. So let me um, just dial it up on the internet. When I found it, I will show it to you. Uh, DJ Player is a, uh, it isn't free, but I don't think it's subscription. I think, you know, it's, it doesn't cost you very much once you've uh, bought it really to continue to use it. This is what it looks like, DJ Player. Uh, and this is uh, almost certainly going to work with your uh, with your controller, uh, and it's very very good. So I haven't actually looked at it recently, but uh, as far as I know, it's still up there. It's still running, uh, and it's uh, very high quality, uh, very high quality, well supported app. So take a look at DJ Player over there on the App Store if you don't want to use uh, Algorithms DJ Pro AI, which is a very good app, I have to say. But it is subscription, which is why you don't want to use it because you're paying a subscription every month and I totally get that. Uh, hello to, uh, there's just hundreds of people saying hello, hello to all of you. I'll pick you out Craig because you're telling us where you are in uh, Portsmouth in the UK. Hello Craig. Uh, so Keith says, I finally got into the Digital DJ Lab. I'm really enjoying, enjoying it and learning a lot more. Uh, so good to hear that Keith. So for those of you that think, what's this? Why can't I be part of it? You can and now is a good time. Let me just tell you about it. Digital DJ Lab is our subscription program for DJs. So uh, if you go to the Digital DJ Tips website right now or in the next few days uh, and go down to this advert, uh, you can get to try this for a dollar. Now this normally costs an awful lot more than that each month talking about subscriptions and it's totally worth it but you get to try it all for a month for a dollar right now. And we're doing this because it's five years old. Digital DJ Lab is five years old. So we're celebrating. So it's got over a hundred what we call mixed deconstructions in it, where we take a mix by a big DJ and show you how it's done with video, breakdowns, downloadable cheat sheets and all that stuff. So whatever gear you've got, you can learn that stuff. It's got about 50 action plans, which are deep dive looks at DJing feats and DJing um, projects and stuff that you can have a go at. Uh, and you also get uh, free workshops with me that no one else gets. There's nothing uh, that you can get anywhere else um, in this. It's all unique stuff. Uh, and as you can see from what's on your screen now, there's a lot of really desirable tricks and transitions and info in here that you can learn. And you can try it. I just want you to try it. It's a dollar at the moment. So what have you got to lose? Uh, try it for a month for a dollar. If you like it, stay subscribed. I think you'll find that there's a lot in here that, you know, this is where we can go deeper than any of our courses. This is where we add the cutting edge stuff. So if you're really serious about your DJing, you do want to take a look at inside, uh, inside the Digital DJ Lab subscription program. So I'm very glad you are enjoying it, Keith. Uh, next question live, we are live here on the Digital DJ Tips Network, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, uh, answering questions for an hour like we do every Thursday from our studios here in reasonably sunny Gibraltar today. Um, what is the best portable MIDI keyboard for a door, says Balgoza. So let's put this into context for people. Uh, a door is a digital audio workstation. It's a piece of software you run on your Mac or Windows computer. And it lets you have a whole recording studio in your computer. Ableton is the most popular one, followed by FL Studio, used to be called Fruity Loops, followed by Logic Pro X for the Mac, or Logic Pro, I think they just call it nowadays. Uh, they're awesome, awesome pieces of software. You can produce music on them, you can make bootlegs on them, you can make re-edits on them. Uh, you can basically do uh, as much or as little music production as you like if you've got a door. Uh, and the question from uh, Balgoza is, what's the best portable MIDI keyboard? So the one I've got is, there's loads of them. M Audio have got a good one, uh, but the one that I've got is the Novation, the little Novation one. Uh, it's, just, it's called a launch key. Uh, and it's uh, it's just a, a very portable, nice little keyboard. Uh, and this is it. I'll show you an image of it. Uh, this is the uh, launch key from Novation. Uh, it works with Ableton out of the box, works with FL and also with Logic out of the box. So uh, there's easy ways of uh, setting it up for those. Uh, but basically it's a MIDI keyboard, it'll work with anything. But it's small, it's light, and it's got everything you need on it. So uh, that's the one I would recommend. You could get it for well under $100. Uh, if you're interested, by the way, in <laughs> learning to produce music, you wouldn't be surprised to know that as a DJ school, we've got a course for that as well. I'll just show you very quickly what that is. Head over to the site and go to the courses page uh, and scroll down and you've got a couple of choices. Uh, you've got our dance music formula, which will teach you to make dance music and actually release it 
on Beatport and get it on Spotify and stuff like that. So this is a big, big old course. Uh, or you've got laid back loops, bootlegs, mashups and re-edits. And this is where laid back loop gives you a much easier way of starting by just re-editing, mashing up and making bootlegs from the tunes you already own. This is a good start, um, but this one is equally good uh, for a new producer. It's just that this one takes you a lot further than this one. Uh, but then again, if all you if all you want to do is make mashups and re-edits, Luke's course is definitely the one to go for. So a couple of courses there to help you with this as well. Uh, so this next one live is from Amar, who says, is there a chance that Tractor Pro will add Tidal or Deezer soon? Beatport link with the 128 kilobits is not that good. And the better tier is a little too expensive. Yeah, so all the DJ software platforms now have got streaming services built into them. So they've usually got these four, SoundCloud Go Plus, Tidal, Beatport Link, and Beat Source Link. SoundCloud Go Plus is a bit of everything. Tidal is more commercial, it's more like just Spotify. Beatport uh, Link is underground electronic dance music, and Beat Source is more open format DJ um, oriented music. So they're your choices. As you say, Amar, it's a little bit more expensive to get good quality audio, and I don't really know why they've done that. I mean, the price has already come down once, it'll probably come down again, uh, but I have no word about whether Tidal will be added to the, uh, to the tractor platform. I'm sure they won't add Deezer. I, I just don't think it'll happen. Uh, but keep an eye on Digital DJ Tips for news, and if we hear about anything along those lines, we will tell you. Alan's got the next question. Hello, Alan, I love your uh, support your support icon there for our uh, friends over in the Ukraine at the moment and they need every bit of support we can give them right now. Uh, it says, hi Phil, I recently bought the Newmark DJ to go to touch this little thing. Uh, do you know if I can use it on my Android phone with DJ2? Uh, I don't know if you can do that. Uh, and when I plug a Bluetooth speaker into the main uh, via a 3.5 to 3.5 millimeter cable, it crackles and there's feedback, but it doesn't do it with my other speakers. Uh, any idea why that is? No, it's probably something to do with the compatibility of the speaker rather than the unit. It won't be anything to do with the unit, I don't think. Uh, so it might just be that you have to use a different speaker with it, Alan. But as far as using it on your Android phone goes, I don't know because I'm not the biggest Android DJ app user. So Alan is asking this question over on our Facebook page, which is the right place to do it because it means that the question uh, remains there afterwards. So if you know the answer to that, please go and give Alan a hand by answering it in there wherever you are seeing that. Uh, Charles says, I've seen something on a new turntable coming out, the Pioneer PLX 1100, Phil. Uh, have you seen it on the web? I haven't, but you know, I'm going to scribble that down immediately uh, and then I'm going to go and have a look for that afterwards uh, and see if uh, there's a leak out there uh, that gives us more information on it. So thank you for that. P pulling a pen out. Obviously stolen this pen from my daughter. Sorry, Amalia. Uh, so I'll go and have a look. I'll go and do some Googling. I always like a good search online for leaked gear. Uh, but no, I know nothing about that turntable. Might be absolute nonsense. Don't know. Not a chance to look. No one's told me anything. Right, so, um, so this is a, a live question from You Don't Like My Music. Who, it's not a question, it's a comment. I've learned a lot from Phil without paying a cent. The digital DJ tips emails have been very helpful. Well, thank you. Look, 95% of our audience, um, they, they, they consume our free stuff uh, and they help out in the comments and basically get involved in the community. And that's fine by us. That's all we want from you guys. Just get involved in the community, ask questions, help each other. That's what it's all about. Uh, and if you want the courses, you want to join the, the elite who end up buying courses from us, hey, we'd love you to do that as well. Look, we give you the stuff for free because we want to spread the word about DJing. You can get the book for free. You can buy the book. It's on Kindle. It's on audiobook. It's on iBooks. It's on Audible. It's, it's everywhere. You can buy it in bookshops. It's real. It exists. But you don't have to. We'll give it you for free. You know, we want to give you this info. So go there, digitaldjtips.com. Get your free download of the book and everything. So thank you for saying that. Our philosophy is share the info and the people who really want your help will come back and buy something from you when they're ready. Um, so I'm glad it worked for you. You don't like my music. I've always loved your name by the way. Uh, this is Sean. I've been new to the channel, but I've been a DJ for six years. With the price of gas on the rise, how would you incorporate gas prices into the quote when giving it to the client? It's a good question. It won't really affect DJs in Europe so much because we don't travel like you guys do in the States. Uh, but I would, um, 
either price it in from now, but then you've got to guess how much it's going to cost. I mean, it's not a massive cost, right? But I guess if your DJ fees aren't that high, then it becomes a bigger cost. It becomes a bigger percentage. Uh, I would just price it in. You know, you know how far you've got to travel. Just price it in to your quotes uh, from now on. But you can't really expect people to pay more once they've already agreed a price with you. But it's a great question. So any more ideas on that, go have a chat to Sean uh, and... Um, not sure where you asked that question, Sean, but it'd be somewhere in our comments. Uh, and uh, get the conversation going. That's what it's all about. Uh, so my question says Pagan on YouTube. It's a, uh, how do you record streaming music from SoundCloud uh, using Serato DJ Pro? Uh, there, so this is a problem that you have because when you are DJing on your um, computer, so let's just talk, talk you through this. So you are on your, he said walking into his, uh, walking into his, uh, open drawer there. You are on your um, DJ gear, you're doing a live stream uh, and you are loading tracks on here uh, and you're DJing on your uh, laptop. I've got my laptop here so imagine I'm live streaming uh, and I want to record my set so I hit record in Serato and it records my set. Um, great, until I load a streaming track onto one of my decks and as soon as I do that the uh, track won't load. It'll tell me no you cannot load streaming tracks when you're recording your set or if you're DJing with streaming tracks and you hit record in your software, it will say, we cannot record your set. Why? Why is that? Well, the reason is that the licensing that the software companies have with Tidal, SoundCloud, Go Plus, Beatport, BeatSource, stops them letting you record your sets. You can't do it, which is annoying, but not that annoying. So let's talk about why it's not that annoying. The reason it's not that annoying is that it's pretty easy to get around. You know I told you a little bit earlier that the audio from your DJ controller is present in your laptop and so it's possible to get that audio into OBS or whatever you're going live from and get it out to the world. It's also possible to hit record in your laptop. So you just get any app that can record. Audacity is a free one. You hit record on it, you select your DJ gear as an input source and off you go. Now the only issue you've got is that sometimes, and this is applicable to the question I answered earlier as well, you can't see that as an input, input source on your laptop. Your DJ gear isn't, isn't available to, as an audio source input, so you've got to make it available. It's there, but it's not available, and the way you do that is by using a virtual audio device. So this is a free one. It's called VB Cable, and you'll find it at vbaudio.com, vbaudio.com. It's for Mac and for Windows. So go and download VB Cable, and then you can set up and tell VB Cable, you know, I want you to take the input that's coming in from my DJ gear and make it available to Audacity, QuickTime, and indeed OBS and anything else that you might want to use it on. Uh, so there are other versions of, of software that do this available, but this is the free one that we always recommend people use because we know it works and hey, it won't cost you anything. Uh, this is from The Kelly who says, can you explain please, after playing a few tracks using Sync on my Prime 4, the deck will speed up. This is a new system for me, what am I doing wrong? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that, The Kelly. Um, you know, you're... I'm not sure what you mean by that. So uh, you are on YouTube. If anyone can help the Kelly on YouTube, please do go over there and uh, and have a go at answering that question or just let us know a little bit more and we'll try and answer that question for you. Uh, so please do not ask your questions more than once. Ask once. You know who you are, people? Don't do it. Uh, what is the decibel level that's safe for your ears? And should I go back to the venue to measure the sound, to the back of the venue to measure the sound? Says Andy. Uh, this is an easy one to answer. The decibel level that is safe for your ears in a long-term situation is 85 decibels, and that's why you see signs on building sites and so on, construction sites that say, um, you know, uh, audio, sound over 85 decibels wear hearing protection. So we've actually got a, um, an article over on Digital DJ Tips about this. I showed it you earlier. I'll show it you again quickly. Uh, it's called The Volume Trick for Better DJ Mixes that Nobody's Talking About. And in this article, we talk about the fact that 85 decibels is the level where you hear music properly and as loud as possible without it starting to distort in your ears and hurt your ears. So therefore, it's a good level to be producing and mixing music at. And also anything higher than that, 
for a sustained period of time is likely to hurt your ears and that's when earplugs are a good idea and so on so it's 85 decibels you can get an SPL meter for your phone so if you just go and search SPL the letter S the letter P the letter L SPL meter uh, for your phone uh, you'll find them in Android and Apple's app stores and then you can just use your phone hold your phone up and it will tell you the level of music where you are um, so that's a good way of just double checking uh, hello to DJ Skoulian. Uh, hello to Andre over there in Dubai. Uh, so this is for, this next question is from, and now we are, we are seriously uh, only hashtag ask because uh, we're very, very busy here. Uh, so this is from DJ Pistol Pete. Uh, Phil, what top of the line four channel controllers would you recommend for connecting two turntables to as well? 80% of my music is vinyl. I use Serato, but I'm looking for versatility to use both. The Pioneer DDJ 1000 SRT. Pioneer DDJ 1000 SRT would be my recommendation to you, Pete. Uh, any tips on hosting fundraising gigs, says Charles. What a great question. As I said, our uh, tutor James Hype did a fundraising live stream uh, and it did really, uh, really well, raised many, many thousands for uh, the Ukrainian uh, Save the Children appeal. Uh, so well done to James for doing that. So you could host a live stream. My tips would be, you know, use the, the, the websites like justgiving.com to raise your money. It's a very simple URL. It's a very simple system to get money from people and you can use Apple Pay and Google Pay and, you know, all that kind of stuff that just takes... Because people want to give money and they'll click through and then their kids will start screaming in the background and then in the end, they end up not doing it because you had a, a, you know, a poor way of, of getting money from people. So I would say do that. You know, just because you're doing a live gig, it doesn't mean you can't have an online version of it. You could have uh, requests. So you know, we'll play your request at the gig if you donate money. Go to the Just Giving page and in the comments after they've given, tell us what, what track you want and we'll play it at the gig and give you a shout out. Um, that's another thing you can do. Uh, I've done gigs in the past where I've given out mixes in return for um, sponsorship. So that's another thing you could think about doing. Uh, you know, you could have a private mix on Mixcloud that you can only hear if you um, donate because you give them a login to it once they have. Uh, but if anyone else has got any ideas about fundraisers uh, and raising more money uh, for, for whatever your causes might be, uh, please do share them. We're all ears here. Uh, so uh, thank you for that Charles and Charles is on YouTube by the way so if you want to just talk to Charles directly that's where you will find him um, so my next question is a kind of uh, technical question this is from Daniel who says I use a DDJ SR2 I go RCA to quarter inch to an external mixer should I run the XLR output on the mixer through the sub then to the speakers or use the mixer for the speakers uh, and use the controller out uh, I would say, I'm not sure if your issue here is with the sub, but just take whichever your output is, whichever your final output is to your, to your speakers, um, then put it into the sub and, and go from the sub to the, to the high ends, as, as, you know, as, as is the instructions that come with the subwoofer. I wouldn't try and run different things for different speakers in that way, Daniel. I'm not sure I've understood you fully there. Um, this is from DJ Kenny. Um, your thoughts on the Roland 707M in 2022. Shall we go and get the Roland 707M? Uh, let's go get the Roland 707M. I've actually got a behind the scenes camera here. Some of you will have seen this before. There it is, looking out onto our permanent setup of the, uh, of the, um, the big pro stuff. Hello, here I am. Um, I've only put that on to give you something to look at that isn't a blank camera while I go and get the 707M. I'm coming back to the main camera now. That back bit of the studio we're currently setting up. We're going to have a whole new area there to demonstrate gear and stuff. So I'm looking forward to that, but it's currently being set up. Hence, it's, it's not lit and you can see wires and stuff. Anyway, this is the Roland 707M. It's an upside down controller, uh, unless you hold it the right way up. Uh, this is probably my favorite Serato controller of all. So actually the uh, question earlier about what controller would you recommend at the high end if you want to put decks in and stuff, this is another one, 707, uh, Roland DJ 707M. Uh, the reason it's my favorite one, even though it doesn't look uh, high end, is that it is high end. It's got, um, not only has it got a Roland sequencer built in, which is pretty cool, uh, but it's also got so many features under the hood that you just can't see by looking at it. For instance, you can play music in two rooms from this. 
you can set a playlist playing on one of your four channels going out to another room and you can DJ on the other channels in the room you're currently in. It's got limiter and compressors on the output so you can have a setup where the, the sound is, has been tweaked across the whole output. So it's almost like, and you can EQ the output and stuff. You can save different scenes in it for different venues. So if you play lots of different venues and you always have the bass and the compressor and stuff set a certain way for a certain venue, you can set it and recall it very quickly when you arrive at the venue. It's just an awesome controller. Uh, and in 2022, just as good as it was when they released it three years ago now. Um, I thoroughly recommend it. It's, you know, it's one of those that doesn't get much in the way of people praising it and so on, but it's the thinking DJ's controller, this one for me. Uh, and yes, in 2022, I would buy this in a heartbeat. I think it's a great controller. And if you think it looks a bit small, stick it in a solid flight case. You know, get one of those flight cases that's made of wood with vinyl around it and big solid corners and when you DJ with it in public just take the lid off and leave it in its case it'll look it'll look totally professional a lot of people that's an important thing they want their gear to look professional right and little controllers sometimes don't but hey stick it in a flight case uh, but yes DJ Kenny I, I love it it's a, it's a really good controller uh, right we're here live on the digital DJ tips website we're live on the digital DJ tips YouTube and Facebook and Twitch uh, and what we're doing is talking DJing for an hour with me Phil Morse. Yes, we're a DJ school. Yes, we sell courses. Yes, we've got our website and all that stuff. But we do this as well every Tuesday and Thursday at 3 p.m. Uh, UK time. Sorry, uh, yeah, 3 p.m. UK, UK time, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, and that's what we're doing now. We're halfway through our live show, a little bit more than halfway through our live show. Uh, what do you want to talk about today? Uh, as I said a little bit earlier, we have got our main studio here, I'm here in the main studio so we can talk about all the stuff we normally talk about. I've got all the gear behind us. I've got our uh, controller of the of the week set up, which is uh, the Rain One, uh, a lovely Serato controller. Maybe you want to talk Serato. That's cool. Whatever it is you want to talk about, I'm here to help. So do ask away. Hashtag ask, please. Uh, and only ask your question once, if you will. Uh, so, right, let's carry on. What have we got next? Uh, this is from... Uh, Saif, who says, hi Phil, I just need some advice on what's the best controller to upgrade to from a DDJ SX. Uh, and so the first question I would ask you is why? Why do you want to upgrade from the DDJ SX, which is a great Serato controller? Uh, there have been two controllers since then, the DDJ SX2 and the DDJ SX3. But what is it about those two or the other big Pioneer Serato controller, the DDJ-1000, uh, what is it about those two that you, uh, or those three now, that you can't get on the one you've already got? I would argue probably not very much. Uh, controllers haven't changed very much. Uh, and so just ask yourself that question because to me, I'd rather buy better loudspeakers for my studio uh, or something like that than, than just upgrade a controller for no reason. Unless it's broken, in which case, yes, get an upgrade, uh, I'd stick with what you've got. You know, they don't sell the DDJ SX Mark III, which is the, the most recent version of the one you've got anyway, anymore. So you'd be looking at the second-hand market. We all know that at the moment, DJ gear is really hard to find because of supply problems. And also it's hard to find because second-hand gear has gone through the roof in price. So you can't even get bargains second-hand anymore generally now. So it's not a good time to buy DJ gear unless you have to. Uh, if it's broken, you're going to be looking at a Serato controller uh, that's equivalent to that. And the one I just showed you, the 707M from Roland or the uh, DDJ-1000 SRT would be my choices there. Uh, Andrew, I, I guess you're talking about our emails here, Andrew. Why is my email still being spammed with emails, uh, says Andrew. Uh, so I want to tell you completely clearly here, if you do not want to be on our email list, click the unsubscribe link and they will go away forever. Uh, we are not allowed to do anything other than take you off our list when you click that. Or if you don't like the production emails, the James Hype emails, the emails about mobile DJing, the emails about going live, um, there's a mute link that will stop all emails about that topic. So you can then use that to choose what we, what we communicate with you about. We communicate nearly every day with our audience and we're very proud of that. We offer a lot of useful stuff. We've got a big team here working very, very hard on producing the most material we can to help DJs. But if you don't want it, I totally get it. 
I unsubscribe from mailing lists all the time. I end up resubscribing to them halfway down the line, but I unsubscribe, I resubscribe, I, I think, no, I've got to get my e email inbox clear and I have a big clear out and then I end up drifting back to the companies I like. Look, we, we're, we're, we're down with that stuff. Just click the unsubscribe, Andrew, and if you are still getting emails after you've done that, the chances are you subscribe to us on more than one email address by accident. Uh, and if you still think that there's something happening that shouldn't be, just drop an email to us and we'll fix it for you. But honestly, we don't want you on our list unless you, you're thrilled to be there. So, um, so anyway, I hope we can get that sorted out for you, Andrew. Thank you for commenting. Uh, this is from Colin on Facebook. Uh, any news on Engine DJ adding an offline locker for Beatport Link soon? If not, do you reckon it'll happen? It's a great question. So Engine DJ is the system that runs on the Denon DJ gear. So to go to my unsetup, my un uh, uh, pretty camera at the back here, uh, it's this gear over in the corner there. Shall we do a, a silly live zoom to that camera just because we can? Here we go, let's do this. It's that gear. You can tell we're live people because in fact, it's not letting me do it. So you really can tell we're live. No, it's not letting me do it. It's that gear in the right-hand side anyway over there, the Denon DJ setup. So that runs what's called engine software, but also uh, it's Prime 2, Prime 4, Prime Go. They all run engine software. So basically this is the built-in software that means you don't have to have a laptop with you. You plug your USB drive in and you can just DJ from that. Uh, and the question is, because these systems are awesome, these systems have got Wi-Fi on them. Uh, and so you can log in to Beatport, BeatSource, Tidal, SoundCloud Go Plus, and you can literally DJ. On the Prime Go, which is a little controller with a battery in it, you can take it, and as long as you've got Wi-Fi or you've got your phone with 4G on or whatever, uh, you can DJ anywhere. I've DJed by, you know, lakes in the mountains and with the Prime 4 and my phone to, to get the signal out to the world. It's awesome. And also they can log on to streaming services. How cool is that? So you've got all the world's music there uh, and you're not having to do anything other than go live or, or start DJing. So they're really, really cool. But the question is, is there gonna be an offline facility so that you don't have to be on the internet in order to DJ with those? I don't, this is me not talking for Den and DJ. This is me not sharing any inside information. This is me telling you the truth as I think it probably is. I don't think you'll ever be able to have an offline locker on the current generation of Den and DJ, and indeed Numark, because there's a Numark Mix Stream Pro as well, which has got the same engine software in it, uh, on the current generation of that equipment. I just feel, and they won't tell me, they'll just say, oh, you know, we're constantly improving and stuff when I ask specific questions like that. Um, I think that if they could do it, they'd have done it by now. I think it's gonna come, but I think it'll come on the next generation of kit. That's just my thinking. I might be completely wrong on that and they might surprise us all and drop it next week. Uh, but I think that you're gonna be waiting for the next gen kit for that. I mean, it's a shame really, because if you think about it, all those pieces of gear take SD cards or they take USB drives, so it's not a memory issue, you know. Um, but I, I just can't see it coming um, anytime soon, personally, it's my view on that. So don't hold your breath for that one, I would say. Uh, so this is from Pavlon. Hello, Pavlon, and thank you for your question. Uh, just a small question uh, that I've been pondering, but with no avail. Is there a way to connect two mixers together, like a Pioneer mixer with a zone, and have the same master out? Yep, take the output of the Pioneer mixer and put it into one of the inputs of the zone mixer, or maybe the auxiliary input, uh, and there you go, job done. Uh, why would that not work for you, pa uh, Pavlon? Is there something else I don't understand about that? Um, so, uh, so let me know if there is something else. Um, so here is just a warning, a word of advice. One of those stories from the cold face of DJing that you, uh, that you share with us every now and then and that, that enrich this community. Uh, because one thing I love about you lot is when something goes wrong, you tell us and we can share it and other people can not make the same mistake. And it's from our friend Sergio who says, last week I was playing in a club in London and I had the worst nightmare a DJ can have. At 1 a.m. when the club was completely full, someone spilled a drink on the CDJ 2000 and the music I was playing on the CD player stopped. As a result, the CD player was totally ruined. As a precaution, I always carry a small controller with me. 
I press play on the other CDJ2000 immediately and I installed the driver with the laptop, the music continued and nobody noticed what happened. That's why I always say never go to a gig with only USB sticks, always bring a backup. And I love that story, Sergio, always have a plan B. Now a lot of people, well not a lot of people, but some enlightened people have something like Algorithms DJ Pro software on their phone. And they have a lead with them that plugs into the phone and goes into an auxiliary input on the back of the mixer. So if something like that happens, you can immediately hit go and start DJing on your phone. And I've seen some of the best DJs in the world DJ on their phones. I'm looking at you, Laidback Luke. If Laidback Luke, our tutor Laidback Luke, can DJ on a phone when something goes wrong and he can't DJ on what he normally uses, you can as well. So at the very least, even if you don't want to carry a small controller like Sergio, download an app for your phone and have some music on there and work out how to use it so that if it happens to you, you can get the music going again very quickly. Uh, so thank you. This is from Lionel. Uh, can you tell me the easiest way to get drops into an RX3? So this is something that will affect everyone who uses controllers or rather DJ systems because these things aren't controllers uh, that don't plug into a laptop. The reason controllers, by the way, like the one we've got here today, are called controllers is exactly that, because they control DJ software on a laptop. They might look cool and they might be brilliant, but they're ultimately, they're just like a keyboard. Uh, they just control the software, just like a keyboard controls your word processor. That's what they're doing. And so when you've got a system that doesn't work that way, when you've got a system where you put a USB or a, an SD card into and you DJ without the laptop, they're not controllers because they're not controlling a computer. They are a complete DJ system. So anyway, what we're talking about here is DJ systems. So the engine systems we've been talking about, the Pioneer DJ's uh, RX systems, or XDJ systems rather, uh, the RX3 being one of those. All of these kinds of, and indeed the Pioneer DJ, you know, professional gear, and indeed everything you can see on that really scruffy behind shot there that next time you see it will be really cool and, uh, and tidied up. All of that stuff uses standalone systems, USBs, SD cards and all that. And none of those systems have a sampler. None of them can do it. So on your keyboard or on the pads here, depending on what your controller's got, when you're using software, there's always a way of triggering samples, DJ drops, idents, and all that kind of thing. You cannot do it on those systems because they don't have a sampler. So how do you get your DJ drops? How do you get your jingles and your samples and your bass drops, anything that you want to drop in that you would normally use a sampler for? And there's a really easy way of doing it. And that is to make a track that contains the samples you want to use, up to eight. How are you going to make a track that contains the samples that you want to use? You are going to use a free wave editor and the one you're going to use is called Audacity. If you don't own this, go and get it because it's free. Go to audacityteam.org and download this piece of software. It's for Windows, Linux and Mac. Once you've got this piece of software, you can then take your jingles, your drops, your audio samples, whatever it is you want to use, and you can put them in a timeline, put eight of them together, and then output that as an MP3. Have it as a track, load it into your DJ software. Now take your DJ software's eight cue points and put one cue point at the beginning of it, up to eight. You can do it with one thing, with one DJ drop, but you can have up to eight. Put your cue points at the beginning of each one. When you want to load uh, and play a DJ drop, if you've only got two decks on your system, load it onto the deck that you're not currently DJing on and then use the cue points to drop in your DJ drops over the music or leave that file, that MP3 permanently loaded on deck three or deck four and then you can just use that to drop them in. Uh, it's a very simple way of doing it and that MP3 that you've made with all your drops in is called a sample set. It's called a sample set and sample sets have got a very rich history in DJing because back in the day, Scratch DJs used to buy vinyl that had all the samples on them and they were called sample set vinyl with all the scratch sounds, you know, the ah and the ah yeah and all those sounds. But when CDs came along and even better than that when DVS came along so DJs could use turntables to control software, 
people used to make what they called sample sets, which were exactly what I just described. They were a set of samples that you want to use in your DJing. So it comes from Scratch DJing, and we actually have a course on sample sets. If you want to go really, really deep into it, go take a look, not at that wonderful DJ controller, but at this course. Go to the courses page and scroll down. Uh, and in the, in the specialized courses, you'll find a course called Make Your Own Sample Sets, uh, which is specifically for Scratch DJs. This is a Scratch course. One of the first courses that Steve and I made, and look at our young little faces there. Um, so uh, it's still totally relevant. The way sample sets are made hasn't changed a bit in the eight years or so since we made that course. So do take a look at that. Uh, but you don't really need the course if you just want to quickly get your DJ drops in your software. Do what I said, grab that free program and you'll be off. Uh, right, we're into the last 10 minutes here on the Thursday Q&A live from Digital DJ Tips, the world's leading DJ school, the only school with courses from the likes of Jazzy Jeff, Laidback Luke, DJ Angelo, and many, many more. Uh, so this is from Mel. Now, I'm looking for a standalone that does stems like Virtual DJ. Does any do this? No, is the short answer, Mel. So stems is the DJ features that let you use controls on your software, software and hardware to, to either just play the vocals or just play the drums or take the vocals out or take the music out. In other words, to separate what are called the stems because that's what they're called in the recording studio, of a track. So if you want to have an instrumental, you can take the vocals out. If you want to drop the vocals over another track, in other words, have an instant a cappella, you can do that. But this is only in DJ software at the moment, and it's only in Virtual DJ and DJ Pro AI. Uh, so you're going to have to use those. There's no other way around that. Uh, our next question, and by the way, hashtag ASK. Um, if you would like to ask a question. Uh, our next question is from James. Uh, Hi Phil, should we upgrade the MIDI cables that are included with DJ controllers? Does it make a significant difference if we upgrade? So you probably mean the computer cable, right? That goes from your DJ controller to the computer. No, it doesn't make any difference. As long as the plugs go in properly, as long as the plugs go in nice and firmly and they're not wobbling, you're gonna be fine with those. The audio cables, again, I wouldn't worry upgrading them. Uh, unless you're gonna be running them a long distance, the audio cables should be just fine. Uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, okay, so here is a, uh, this is our winner of our DJ name of the week. Uh, hello, DJ Wiki Wiki, who says, Hi Phil, have you heard any updates on Native Instruments Tractor? No, every year I have a chat to all the DJ companies in uh, January and say, what's coming up this year? Uh, and apart from a new support forum, which of course is a good thing. Um, Tractor hasn't done anything new or wouldn't tell me about anything new uh, that's coming up, but they're still there, they're still working, they're still upgrading their software and you know, keeping everyone, uh, keeping everyone um, up to speed on the new operating systems and all that. So it's not been abandoned or anything like that, but we haven't got any new hardware, uh, advice, uh, hardware news from Tractor. Uh, this is from Stevie D who says, I've been a student for one year and I've never used the student hub on Facebook till today. Uh, I tried to write a post and I can't see it anywhere on Facebook apart uh, on Facebook uh, from other students. I can't, hang on a second, let me read that again. I can't see it anywhere on Facebook apart from other students. Why is this? It's probably because you're not actually a member if you've never used it, Stevie. Uh, so let me show you what Student Hub is all about because Student Hub is something, you know, there's a lot of DJ schools online, um, but Student Hub is something that only we have. You know, what happens is a lot of other schools try this kind of stuff and it doesn't work. You're in a ghost town, but with Digital DJ Tips, you're not. You're with 6,000 other students and you're, you know, you're going to get a lot of help. So Digital DJ Tips' Student Hub is a place where we uh, help you uh, as a student uh, to not only uh, get accountability and get ideas for your DJing and share your share your um, triumphs and your and your challenges and so on in a, in a private community but we're there as well so it's not only you lot it's us as well we're all in there helping you out this is what it looks like student hub um, it's a great place to uh, share ideas as I say to get accountability to ask questions you can see some of the questions being asked in here and everyone's getting help everyone's getting response it's not a ghost town like some of those other places that uh, you get given a login to when you buy DJ courses. Uh, so look, this is a great part. Probably for a lot of people, this is the part that they like the most about buying our courses. It's called Student Hub and it's free for life when you buy any of our courses. And you're invited in here uh, as soon as you buy anything from Digital DJ Tips. So if you are not a member, you will see on the top right hand side when you go to facebook.com slash groups 
slash digitaldjtips.studenthub. When you go to that URL, you will see a join student hub. Or you can just search for Digital DJ Tips Student Hub in Facebook. Or, and this is what I'm going to recommend you do if you're a current student, drop an email to info at digitaldjtips.com. Say, hey, I'm having trouble getting into Student Hub. And they will give you the info you need to get yourself in there. Everyone who's put in there is done manually. We, we, there's no automatic way of getting in. We will manually check you're a member of one of our courses and we'll let you in there. So that's the way to do it. I hope you can get in there quickly because it's a great place, Stevie. Uh, this is from uh, Craig, who says, I've been watching old uh, Magnificent streams. Uh, Magnificent, of course, being the Magnificent DJ Jazzy Jeff. Uh, from the lockdown period, and I've been seeking out some awesome classic disco tracks that Jeff includes. Any other good resource sources for lost disco and house classics? Uh, so, obviously, using Shazam when Jeff is playing uh, tracks is a great place to discover the names of tracks. Uh, but one of the things I would recommend you do is go to the Who Sampled website. Because Who Sampled will give you, when you hear disco samples in current house music, and let's face it, they're everywhere, aren't they? You can go here and you can dial in the name of the track and it'll tell you where they came from. So if I was to dial in, uh, let's dial in uh, Daft Punk Get Lucky. Just I'm just picking something completely randomly here. So what this is going to give you is the track and it'll tell you where any samples came from in the track. So as you can see already, there's lots of people talking about the samples in this track, where they came from and so on. So do go and take a look at who sampled if you want to know where those obvious disco samples come from in tracks and then you can go and get the original tracks from there. Um, I also love, and I'm not sure if you can still get them, but you can probably still buy the CDs on eBay. Uh, they were called uh, Master Cuts. So Master Cuts was, if you go to Discogs, so if you haven't discovered Discogs, people, you really have to discover Discogs. Uh, Discogs is the place to find out about music uh, that has been uh, released anywhere. Uh, so if you go to Discogs and go to master, search Master Cuts, um, we're gonna look at labels here, Master Cuts in labels. This label here was the place to get classic old school music. Look at some of the albums they've got, 80s groove anthems, uh, they've got New Jack Swing, classic jazz funk, classic soul, um, they've got classic uh, mellow, uh, Sal Sol, Rare Groove, P-Funk. Uh, this really was a compilation series to beat all others. And you can still buy secondhand the CDs of these. So the years here are like 1993, 94, but this is stuff from the 70s and 80s. Uh, they are some of the best because they've got the original 12-inch versions of these tracks and they are... Um, very, very carefully compiled to give you only the real, real good stuff. So I would say go to Discogs, type in Master Cuts, look at the label, and go look at the track listings on some of these. And if you find some that you think are, are stuff you really want, uh, go look at the CDs on eBay uh, and go and order some CDs and get them ripped into your DJ collection. You can have that one on me, uh, but there is something, if you've never thought of that, there is a, a, certainly a, uh, a little seam that you can go and mine there that you might not have thought of. Uh, right, I'm going to do one more question, then I'm out of here because we've got to be out of here by the top of the hour. Uh, before we do that question, DJ John just wanted to thank us for our courses. Um, I'm doing the Layback Loop Bootlegs Mashups and Re-Edits course at the moment. I'm learning so much. I talked about that course earlier, didn't I? So thank you for that, DJ John. I'm glad you're enjoying the course. Uh, this is uh, our final question of the day then, uh, and I'm going to pick it from um, Eddie. Eddie's question is about cables again. And Eddie says, is there a sound quality difference between XLR and RCA cables? So XLR cables are the ones that have got a big chunky three pin plug on that clicks in uh, and they're thick cables. They're often seen on PA systems. And RCA cables are the little red and white cables like the ones I've got on the back of this mixer here, this DJ setup here that look like this, right? They're RCA cables. You always get a red and a white one. Um, so the question you asked was, is there a sound quality difference between them? The difference between those cables is the XLRs are shielded or balanced. And so they have a clever electronic system in them that will protect 
the cable that's actually carrying the music from outside interference, hum and buzz and stuff like that. And so they're very good, especially when you're carrying audio over a long distance. We're talking like more than five meters. So if you've got a cable that has to run carrying audio for more than five meters, use XLR or indeed there's another incarnation of that called uh, Balanced TRS. TRS is like the headphones cable, right? You know the socket on the end of your headphones, the big one, not the little one. That's a TR that, that's effectively a TRS. So the, the cables that have got one that looks like a headphones one, that looks like a stereo headphones one, on each end, they're also balanced cables. So it depends what's on your equipment, and some equipment has both, both TRS and XLR, but they're both balanced or shielded cables. So if you're running a cable a long distance, use those. If you're running at a short distance, the RCA ones are absolutely fine. There's a reason that the, the most professional DJ mixers, shall we cut to our really unprofessional messy shot again? On the back of those mixers there, the Pioneer mixer and the Denon mixer, on the back of these, you don't get XLR inputs for the stuff coming in. There's the mixers. You don't get XLR inputs from these because the cables are short, right? They're not long cables. So there's no need for that. So if they're not going to put them on the most professional mixers in the world, you don't need them for short distances either. But certainly when you're getting to five meters or more, you do need to use XLRs or TRS shielded or balanced cables, which will give you uh, far better a chance of getting a strong signal with no hum or buzz or electrical interference going on. Right, that's it for this week, people. Uh, I will see you next Tuesday for our Tuesday tips live where we'll be talking about a particular topic in the world of DJing uh, and maybe I'll have tidied up that shot by then. Who knows? Constant improvement is the name of the game here. Digital DJ tips. Uh, but meanwhile from me, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for all your questions. It's always a humbling privilege to answer them for you. Stay safe wherever you are. Pray for good news in the world and I will see you next time. And until then, get good, get out there and make the moments. Bye-bye.